even in the space age, no sight is more impressive, more exciting than this. But it's a sight that's fast disappearing, for the railways are changing over from steam to oil and electricity. For more than a century, coal has fed the steam locos which developed from George Stevenson's rocket. And the steam locos have ruled the Iron Road. It was an age when machines were still something of a novelty. But first, it was an age of dignity. Just look at this railway coach built for Queen Victoria. Every button on the ceiling seems to say, the Victorian age. More dignity. This was designed for a government building in Whitehall, but another architect won the competition, and the design was sold to the railway company to become a London terminus. Other stations, of course, were not built on quite such grand lines. So maybe it's as well you can't always see out of the window. Some travellers revel in the glorious past of Britain's railways. After all, they set the pattern for the world. This trip was taken to commemorate the centenary of the London-Portsmouth line. Though in those spacious days too, it seems, trains were sometimes so crowded, even the men had to stand. The business of filling the steam engine with water has become almost a ritual. and the coal. The spectacle of the fireman feeding his iron horse has given many people a cosy feeling of animal welfare. But it's the fireman himself who has to work like a horse. The famous locomotive works at Crewe have already seen the end of an era. They have built their last steam loco. And here she is. After her will come diesel electric locos. And it's goodbye to that coal and water ritual. A diesel fills up its tank like a car. And this one is all set to take an express for a 250 miles run. What a difference from the system of coal depots all along the line. But above all, oil does away with this. Many is the housewife living near a loco depot, this one's a chalk farm incidentally, who has views on the changeover from the smoke age. Well, it can't come too soon for me. We get so much smoke and dirt in this district. And now to Stratford. Not the one upon Avon, but the one beyond London's Liverpool Street. This boy is finding out that a ride in the cab is far more comfortable and cleaner than in a steam locomotive. And instead of waiting to get up steam, she's off at the touch of a button, like the self-starter on the family car. It won't be long now before steam is a thing of the past on the Stratford sidings. Already these powerful diesel electrics are hauling much of the East Anglian express traffic. But the fastest start to finish train in the country, the Bristolian, is still steam hauling. She touches over a hundred miles an hour. Now here's the Woodhead Tunnel under the Pennines. Its roof has never been darkened by a coal burning train. This slope of 1 in 40 needed four steam locos to drag a train to the top. Now one electric loco hauls, while another just nudges the train up the steepest section. Up and down the lines, electricity's on the way.
these posts are going to carry overhead wires. The carriages, which have seen more dashing days, now spend their retirement in a wiring train. And the only passengers travel on the roof. Eventually, these miles of heavy copper wire will be fed direct from the grid. Railway scenery is certainly changing. What a difference it'll make to our children's children's drawing books. Incidentally, this framework's going to be harder to draw than a fun. For your information, it's called a pantograph. The changeover may have brought delays and hold-ups to passengers, but the new system should speed things in future. British Railways has schools where drivers learn the new techniques. What do they think of the change? It is very much cleaner and warmer, and. Uh the absence of coal dust and grime is evident in cleaner hands and uh, it is true to say that you can finish the day's work with a white collar. It'll be years before wiring can be carried all over the country and even then it may not be economic on less busy lines. The Cornish Riviera Express is now a diesel powered train. And here's the most powerful diesel electric engine in the world. It's the Delta, and it runs in Scotland. There are more on the way. Many small country lines have been closed, but others are kept going with a diesel rail bus. There are improvements too in laying the lines. These extra long lengths are not only easier to lay, they'll mean a smoother ride so that as you're snoozing in the 740, the train will go di 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 da not nearly as often. Dover Marine was retracked the other day. Soon the only steam on the way to France will be in the ship. Older signal boxes have seen the red light. This new palace at St Pancras replaces four of the old ones. It used to take 20 men to do what these two are doing. All they have to do now is to raise a finger. Some difference from a long, strong pull. Mrs Mop mechanised? Well, not quite, but this equipment should make it easier to see which line you're travelling on. And when you're waiting for the train, it'll be in stations like this. A station which seems to fit in with the cleaner, swifter engines of today. Britain's railways are really passing from the coal age to the atom age because more and more their electricity will come from the new atomic power stations such as Dunre. And letting off steam will be a thing of the past.